Well, I'm going to say it once, and I'll probably say it again before the conference is over. I love conferences. Oh my gosh. I love them. Love them. The uh, first real conference I've ever been was at Hillsong uh, in Sydney, Australia, 2002. It's where I'm from. I'm from Australia. It's from Brisbane. And about five weeks after I went to that conference, uh, the Lord was preparing my heart, obviously, for such a time. But five weeks after that conference, God opened up my ministry. So I started ministry ten years ago by the grace of God, being born without arms and legs. I'll say it again, by the grace of God. He gave me out no arms, no legs. By the grace of God, He gave me a need for Him. By the grace of God, He gave me the beautiful, beautiful parents I have. Need to make a note. From the important point I can't forget. By the grace of God, I am here today. By the grace of God. By the grace of God. Amen. Nothing I get is undeserving. Or what? Deserving. It's interesting, isn't it? When things are given to you, like, well, I didn't deserve that. <laughs> I felt that way. I didn't deserve to be born this way. What did I deserve? What did I deserve? You know, it's funny how we go to conferences and, and we hear about some good things, and here's the point that I want to open up with. Don't go home just with knowledge. Don't go home with just good notes and good points or a good conference. Go home and do something. You can't go home and expect everything to be different unless you do something different. You actually can't expect more faith in your life today and ever in your life unless you ask Him for faith. In fact, that way of growing in faith is the only way that you receive its faith, so I don't understand. Why do we stop asking for more faith? Don't you and I need more faith every day? And it's interesting when we are faced with different challenges and different circumstances. I think the title of this one is called what? Making the most out of your circumstances? You know when your circumstances come to you, you're like, well, I need more faith. That's not what you think. That is not the first thing that comes to your mind. I need more faith. No, I need to work this out. I need a good plan. Right? I'm so excited to preach, I'm all over the place, my hands are flying everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so go home and do something with what you've been given, and then when you, according to circumstance, and it's a bad circumstance, you sort of ask yourself, did I really deserve that God? Well, compare yourself to Job. Favorite chapter in the Bible for me, Job 38. Yes, write it down. And if you don't have your pens and papers on, come on. Down. <laughs> you got ten fingers? Use it. <laughs> you got pens and paper? Use it. It will help you, trust me. So, I deserve this circumstance. I have no arms, no legs. Now, I'm not going to share my testimony again, but the blind man was blind. Jesus said so that the works of God would be revealed through him, and then the greatest assignment when we come to conversion in Jesus Christ is knowing him and bringing someone else along with you. Started preaching at 19 years old. What a circumstance to be put in. It's really interesting that when it's a bad circumstance, it's called a position. Right? But what would you think? What's a good circumstance? What's a bad circumstance? Whatever your word is, bad is bad and good is good. But what do I deserve? Well, when you look at a circumstance, you have to, first of all, be thankful. I am thankful. Write that down. Do you always feel thankful? No. Do you think I would like a pair of fingers to get this hair out of my mouth right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but at least I can spit. <laughs> Okay, no joke. Be thankful. What do I deserve? Okay, who is good for each and what does he have? 
The biggest three questions that we always as human beings need to understand is number one, who are we? Number two, why are we here? And number three, where are we going when we're not here? Now, if you understand the truth of those three things, then you'll have a good perspective. Now, God's opened up many, 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 many doors for me to speak in places where I'm not allowed to preach, in corporations where I do motivational speaking. I've been to China, I've been to Middle East. And even in places in China, they don't have my fingerprints, so if I cause trouble, then I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> Spoke to 45,000 of the top students in the nation. They brought me over there, think we know you're a Christian, but they're jumping off buildings, come and save our kids. So I went and shared the message, and then we Christian, and during the message, I had my Bible up on the table in China, and uh, sort of used it as a prop. <laughs> <laughs> And, and uh, then I talk about faith, F-A-I-T-H, full assurance in the heart. And then I talk about how I have a friend who loves me no matter what. And then between the questions and answers, questions are like, well, what's your faith? Oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> <laughs> Who's your best friend? His name's Jesus. Yeah. Oh. What's that book? You said it's your favorite book in the world. What is that book? Bible. And I step on people to people's toes, but I'm only 38 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> but God is great. Anyway, I've been in the Middle East and I gave a four-hour motivational seminar. I'm like, God, what am I going to speak about for four hours? I don't have four hours of content while I came. And after I'm like <laughs> <laughs> To the richest oil company in the Middle East, 20,000 Muslims. Uh, they said, uh, well, you gave us principles. You said you're thankful. You said you don't know what you can achieve until you try again. You said when you fail, keep going. So perseverance, resilience. You said failure equals education. You said take opportunities to opportunities. But how did you do it after four hours? Of information. And the guy who's the head of the company said, I know what it is. It's your faith. Tell us about your faith. So in front of 20,000 Muslims. So really, when we have faith, there's a foundation, the ceiling, and the windows and the doors and walls of our heart. There is no limit as to what God can do. God did not give me um, God, God did not give me arms and legs. He is still God. He is perfect. He's always on time. He knows best. I thank God that He didn't give me arms and legs when I thought that would be the best thing. Because I would rather see five hundred thousand more souls in heaven by the age of twenty-nine. Not because of what I said, but because of what the Holy Spirit's done. Then have arms and legs for a stupid couple of days compared to eternity. Are you with me? So I have to tell you all that to put everything into perspective. So, with that foundation in mind, when you are coming to a circumstance, when things are good, great. It's really funny how we all pretend everything's great. How you doing? Fine. How's the kids? Fine. How you been? Good. <laughs> what you been doing? How do you know? I've just been busy. <laughs> Nothing's fine, man. Are you kidding me? There's always some prayer request for God. You, you don't have a prayer request? Well, how much do you pray to Him? On a good day, how much do you pray to Him? And on a bad day, how much do you pray to Him? Did you ever pray, Lord, I want you more? So then stop complaining if you put you in a position to want Him more. If you want patience, stop complaining that it puts you in a position to wait in the queue. If you just ask for patience, I'm sorry. I'm right. <laughs> stop being schizophrenic. <laughs> Amen. 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 You can't go into a gym, a gymnasium, and not pick up any weights and go in. Hi, everyone. How you doing? Socialize in the gym and walk out. Oh, man. It was good. It was good to go to the gym. You didn't pick up one weight. You expect your muscles to grow without using them? No. So thank God that He puts you in a position to wait, so then you exercise patience, that God's work would be manifested through James 1. 
So you've been mature and lacking nothing. So what you've got to understand is when you put in a circumstance, it's a good opportunity. When God puts you in a circumstance, it's an obstacle in our mind, but it's in God's mind an opportunity for us to ask more in faith. And then as you grow in faith and you see what God's done 10 years ago, then you have more faith and you see another challenge. Like, well, wait a second, God was faithful last time. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's like me. When you Does anyone have cancer? And want to pray for things? In Jesus' name, be healed. And I have full faith that God can heal you. And any other physical miracles, in Jesus' name, be healed. And I can say this without any shame, any condemnation, for you to know this. I'm not a preacher to say, God will heal you right now. Now that's a cop out. No, it's in His Word. Present your request to God that the peace of transcends all understanding. Guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So many people came up to me and said, Nick, all you need is more faith. And if you just believe, then God will give you arms and legs. Not so. But let God's perfect work be done with you. If I believe that God knows best, then He has put me in a position to exercise my faith for the battles ahead. If you think you're going through a bad time right now, well, I'm sorry. There might be a harder time in five years' time. Just rewind five years ago, and you know what I'm talking about. But thank God. Because if you don't grow in faith, guess what you're doing? Shrinking in faith. If you don't use your muscles, you will turn into fat, spiritual Christians. I don't want to be fat spiritual Christians. So give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Go to church. Well, I don't know if I'm going to go to that church because the pastor. I'm going to. What, what's 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 the message today? Oh, feed me, feed me, feed me. And as you're getting fed spiritually, sort of pointing out the flaws. You can't believe that you sang that chorus seven times in a row. What are we doing? Is everybody singing this song? Is everybody... What's going on? We live to breathe and meditate on God's Word and His presence. And we're part of the body of Christ to serve. You don't come to this conference to get filled up if you're empty. You come full to receive the overflow. You're not full because of the conference. You're full because of your personal walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And how do you do it? Discipline yourself. Get someone to hold you accountable. To pray, to read more. Man, it's our job as the spiritual leaders of our home to take a stand. To pray for our kids. Your kids' destiny is not, not wavered by simply their choices. Their destiny is wavered whether or not you pray for them every day. To make the right choice. It starts with prayer. It starts with faith. It's understanding who I am and what I have in my circumstance. I have arms and legs. Good. Give me cancer. Good. Take out my tongue. Take off my ears. Get a gun pointed at my head and scare me. Scare me so bad that you're going to kill me. Why? Why am I okay? Shoot my family. You think I'm going to like that if you see me shooting my family? No. You think I'm going to like if you rape my daughter? No. You think I'm going to want to forgive anyone? No. You think I'm going to be pretty hard stone? Yeah. But seriously, to the extent of Job, to the extent of Apostle Paul, with the great cloud of witnesses, See what God does if you just give Him a chance. What are you going to do with your broken pieces? You're going to make nothing out of it. So you try to get help. 
People go to alcohol or escapes or affairs. Pornography. A little secret spot in your heart that no one knows of. Wrong! God knows. And anything you go will never ever heal your heart, restore your soul, and set you free like the blood of Jesus Christ. Confess your sin, He will forgive and transform, renew one day at a time. You're a work in progress. I'm throwing bricks at you now, but just swallow them. <laughs> so, where was it? Rewind. So, circumstances. I didn't finish the thought. Help me out. Job 38. Job 38. So, my favorite, favorite chapter. Coming to God, Him being everything you that you can be. God may not change your circumstance, but He can change your heart. And in the perspective of eternity, whatever happens to me down here doesn't compare to what glory is revealed in Romans 8.18. But I'm wrong. You ask me, have I gone through difficult things? Yeah. Did I go through difficult things at age 8? Yeah. Those lessons and those muscles... Would that sustain me for 15 years old? No. Then I go through 15 year old valleys and I exercise my faith and see God's faithfulness. Now is that going to be enough for 21 year old defeats? No. Well circumstances? No. What's going to God? God's going to build up my muscles. This is the journey. This is the growing process. What have I got? Ah, uh, you don't remember? Being thankful. Why am I thankful still? If I see my family die and all that stuff that I told you, take out my tongue, take it, because you can't take away my soul. You can't. You can't. You can't. No one can touch your soul. I'm in God's hands. And I'm thankful. Why? Because if someone shoots my family, they're going to heaven. My family's going to heaven because they believe in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to see him one day. Now that, Nick, seriously, are you going to pooch like that at their funeral? No. But do I know deep down they're going to go to heaven? Yeah. Will I miss them? Yeah. I'm going to cry and bet you I'll flood this room with my tears. But still say, God, you're God. I'm not. You're faithful. He will not let me go through more than I can end. What circumstances are in your mind? Do you feel disabled? Let me tell you about thankful. I, I love my little foot here, and I can type 43 words in a minute, in a minute on a computer. And um, i got two toes. Peace, how you doing? <laughs> um, I swim, I golf, I fish, I scuba dive, I go on skydiving. Uh, this year, I want to do crazy stuff like that. I love life. Um, it's meant to be enjoyed. I just don't want to break your leg. <laughs> And then, you know, talk about being thankful, you know, like it was really hard to be thankful, you know, when everybody else had arms and legs and I didn't have arms and legs, right? The story is I tried to commit suicide at age 10, God helped me here still, and I'm glad he did. You don't know what's around the corner to you, go around the corner. Amen? But check this out. I was playing soccer one day, when you have a full-size soccer ball next to me, I'm a little boy. <laughs> teenage, teenage years, I'm like, you know, shorter, not much. I mean, this is really funny. This is me standing, this is me sitting, not much. <laughs> but I'm standing on the soccer field one day, and my friend from way back is getting ready to kick it to me, right? And I'm like, oh man, like he is far, far away. And he's like, are you ready? And I'm like, yes! <laughs> my knees were shaking, <laughs> my palms were sweaty. <laughs> And he gets ready like this, and he goes like this, and this ball's coming right for me. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> Have you ever had that feeling when something's coming for you? And it really doesn't matter what you do, you're dead. <laughs> I had that feeling. So I'm thinking, man, I hope the matrix is real. I jump up in the air, and I do this cool slow motion karate kick kick. Like this, because it's a bit too low to head, but too high to kick, so I'm like, I have to meet it head on. Like, what am I going to do, this? 
So we like, I'm gonna kill this thing. I'm like, I jump in the air, while I'm in the air, I do a karate kick, kick and I go, whoop, like that, right? <laughs> and the ball comes, hits my foot, bends it backwards in the air, and oh. oh. it's spraying my foot. <laughs> I need this for everything. I need it to walk. I mean, if I, oh, if I, if I had to move anywhere, anywhere, I had to walk like this. <laughs> Yes, I have ups and downs, but I am fully content in knowing that I am a son of the King of Kings, and Lord of Lords, an ambassador of Jesus Christ, a general in the army of God. I'm His son. If I truly believe that, it's hard to believe that by faith you believe that more and more every day. You don't need to be a speaker to be an evangelist. You don't need to write books to be an evangelist. You don't need to, to get up on stage to show the splendor or the works of God in your life. It is done with love. What are you thankful for? It is a very easy exercise. Very easy exercise. Are you ready for this? Very, very easy. Think of the three nearest things in your life. Think of that. Okay, one hour and 39 minutes, they're gone. No warning, they're gone. Can you remember when you last hugged him? Can you remember last time you had a, a conversation other than in, 
discouraging them or correcting them? When was the last time you picked up the phone to that person that's being heavy on your heart? You have a choice. Focus on me, 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 me. It's not about that. It's about how can I facilitate the glory of God that others may see that there is someone watching over me. Does that mean you don't cry now? You're crying. We all do. But by faith, you take one step at a time. So how do you get the most out of your circumstances? How do you get the most out of your money? You got a grant? You gonna give it to me? Give it to God. There are some preachers who do that. That's hilarious. I'm joking. I don't respect that. God moves your heart to give me a thousand dollars, though. That's fine. <laughs> But uh, this is it. This is what I want you to understand. You try to understand the most out of your circumstances when you put it in a place where it becomes the most you could ever be. So if I, what's your name? Lincoln. Lincoln. So Lincoln's up the front, and I'm here. Do you have any any ideas about finance? Yeah. Yeah? Have you invested money before? Yes. Cool. So let's say his company is ABC and mine is DEF. Okay. Now Lincoln, he'll give you 100% of the money guaranteed and you'll give it to me, right? You'll give it to me and I'll give you maybe 50% return. Where, where are you going to put your money in? All right. What are you going to do with your brokenness? What are you going to do with your circumstances? You know, it's funny when you're a teenager, you just can't wait to see the people next day at school and tell them everything that's going on. Oh, I can't believe this happened. Oh my God, did you hear such and such? That's true. I mean, it's, it's so true. Like when you're a teenager, you just have to tell everybody, this is what I'm going through. No, it's okay. It's okay. Oh, I wish I had different parents. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I do. how it is, right? And you just can't, I mean, but, but the thing is, is, what are we looking for? We're actually looking for someone who understands. Someone who understands finance. Okay, fine, but someone who understands my brokenness. I cried and I cried and my mom and dad saw me crying on my, uh, you know, coming home from uh, school. Even like, I'll wake up in the morning. I hear it. I'll wake up in the morning and my parents are like, hey, God's going to plan for you. You ready for school? Yeah, I'm ready for school. You're going to school and I'm all happy. I'm waiting mean, five minutes. Someone points a finger at me and laughs me and I'm like, oh. And crying. And I come up, oh, my God, I'm gonna go back to school. No, you have to go to school. Why? You're so mean. I don't want to go to school. No, you have to go to school. I don't want to go to school. It's okay. It's okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Isn't that what we want? Everything's gonna be okay. So I share my brokenness to my parents, and they see my brokenness all the time, and you share whatever you want to your spouse. About what you're going through, and guess what? Not even your spouse will really understand how it feels. Just like you won't fully understand how it feels. For the person sitting next to you, I don't understand how it feels when my mom and her eight siblings cross the Alps of Austria to escape communism. How would I? understand that journey unless I never went on that journey and even if your best friend knew everything what are they going to do? People say everything's going to be okay everything's going to be okay at one point I'm like everything's going to be okay more than headbutt in the head like, <laughs> but they did it out of love why? because we want love and we want to know that everything is going to be okay. Put your hand up if you want to know that everything's going to be okay. Okay, put your hand down. How many of you open the Word of God more than Sundays? 
Good. I wasn't expecting any hands. I was just a question. <laughs> Praise God. That's awesome. And I mean it. When you understand what this is, it's not the circumstance. It's using this as the sword, this as the, the solid foundation. You can build anything you want. You look at other people. Oh man, you know, sometimes I wish I was a Christian and I could do what my friends do. And all these people, you know, they're prospering without a God. And I don't know, man. This whole thing about believing in God and sacrifice, sacrifice, sacrifice. And, you know, it just seems like we're just meeting ends and stuff. And I wish I was like that. You know, that couple over there, they've got no problems and no circumstances. First of all, you're wrong. But second of all... <laughs> Second of all, what circumstance? It's the matter of the heart. You want a job? Great. What if you don't get one? It's the matter of your heart. I'm free. I'm in Jesus. And I want you to be in Jesus. I want you to understand that He's the greatest mind. He is the master. And I'm His masterpiece. He can... He, he's, he's the potter, and guess who I am? I'm the clay. D does the clay have a, have a mouth saying, Oh, that hurt! No, it's clay. It's, it's clay. <laughs> you ever had that feeling where you're sort of taking shape and you finally get to where you're going, and you're like, oh, okay, finally, I got, I got, yeah, I feel like oh, I can breathe, and then, right? God doesn't spare you from that. But He promises you that as He molds you and makes you, you become stronger and stronger and stronger. Every time that clay falls, you become stronger and stronger and stronger. I'm in the potter's hands. And that's the best hands to be in. Not my best friends, not my, my mindset of, of only this happened, this happened. No, man, I'm free. I'm absolutely free. And I'm conscious that other people were here last time. Um, Last session, so I don't want to repeat myself too much. But what I do want to do is, is talk about usefulness. Usefulness. To whom much is given, much is expected. Me, 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 my circumstance, my circumstance. So I don't know what God wants me to do. Nick. My, my purpose, I don't know where God wants me. Have you visited the widows? Can you make a call? Even a person with a hearing impairment. We can listen to people. We can serve people. Broken people serve broken people. Don't wait to be fixed. Because it ain't going to happen. Amen? It ain't going to happen. You're not going to be perfect. No one was made to be perfect. Adam and Eve were not perfect. They saw God face to face every day. Today, know that you're broken. And thank God that you know the greatest circumstance of all is the position that is with you and you need them. And you can still go out and feed the homeless. You can still go out and encourage someone. You can still go out and hug someone. Yeah, I'm serious. It sounds so simple, but how many of us do it? Actually, it's, it's a verse in the Bible, I don't know where it is, but I'm not going to try to quote it where it is, but I'll paraphrase it. As you serve others, God does a healing in your heart. There is something that happens when you serve. That's when you fix your eyes off your circumstance and focus on Jesus. Useful by faith in action. Peter. He saw the rough waves, right? And they saw a ghost. 
They thought it was a ghost. It was Jesus walking on water. You know the story. I thought, okay, it's a ghost. He says, no, it's I. He says, Peter, step up. Get out of the boat. Peter says, if it is you, then yeah, okay. I'll walk on water like you. What happens? He gets out of his seat, if he's sitting down, gets up on the edge. I don't know how he did that. I don't know what. That looks like physically, I mean, it's a storm, yet the boat's rocking up and down. He gets out. And he's walking on water. He walks on water. You know, a lot of people, when they come to a soft, hurting place in their life, I believe that's when you realize that you can't do this on your own. And then Jesus says, walk on water. And then we step out on the water. And then guess what happens? Peter sees the waves. Too many teenagers, they give their life to Jesus Christ. And two weeks later, something happens. Like, oh, see, you're not there. They give their life to Jesus Christ and they pray for something and it doesn't happen. Oh, see, you're not there. But that doesn't mean God's not there. It doesn't mean that it's not listening. He's not listening. It doesn't mean that He's not on time. It doesn't mean that He's imperfect. It doesn't mean that He's not sovereign. God is the sovereign God. You can't change that. We can't change what Jesus Christ did and who He stands for. And the world can try to take out BC and AD out of the timeline, but they will never take the words of Jesus out. I am. And he's the only one who stopped time for 33 years. So to say, trying to be funny, but <laughs> here it is. <laughs> there are some of us who walk on water and then see the circumstances and start sinking. What's Peter going to do? Well, I'm going to paddle hard. I'm going to paddle hard. Is that you? Are you quite done paddling hard? Oh, I need a job. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to... I'm getting tired. It's okay. Just keep on going. Just keep on going. Yeah, I can do it. I can do it. But the wise man builds his house upon the rock. And I'd rather have a tent on the rock than a 30 million square foot home on sand. I'd rather have a tiny little boat that fits on this, on this thing, this platform with no holes than Titanic. Oh, but it's so nice! Look, it's so nice! Oh, it's the biggest boat! Oh, look, it's got gold! The circumstances as if your house has gold or not really, or how are you feeling, or what you don't know. What do you do with that? You make sure every day, Lord, help me live to reflect that I am on the rock. And if my life does not show that, give me the grace. Give me the mercy to build me. Teach me your way. I give you this circumstance. Lord, please 
Help me to forgive those people who've hurt me. Help me to forgive myself. You'll be amazed. How many people go to church every Sunday but still use alcohol to forget the past? It's idol worship. If I go to anything but Jesus, I put something in front of my priority. And then let's take it a step further. Teenagers who are Christian, they date and they have sex before marriage. It's okay, we're Christians. No, it's not. No, it's not. Look at you know, it's okay. The circumstances are okay. No, it's not. Look, look it up in the world. It's not okay. Are we living the way God wants us to live? And do we reflect the hope we have in Him? Lay them down every single day. I was surfing one day, and the uh, first time I surfed, I uh, was in Hawaii, and the whole beach was looking at me, and man, they talk about pressure. <laughs> and they pushed me like 20 times into a wave, and I just couldn't get up. I mean, the, surf, the surfboard was like this long and stuff, and it was a longboard and stuff, and we'd take up a pile of towels, I'll be laying down at first and then pushing me into it. The person was teaching you surf was Bethany Hamilton, soul surfer, you're going to check out that film. Yeah, she's phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal woman of God. What you see is what you get with her, she's so cool. So a pile of times were there, they pushed me into the, uh, into the wave and I tried to get up, but I couldn't do it, I just couldn't do it. Like, I could do this on the stage, but it's, it was just hard. So 15 times I fell over and Finally, when I got up, the whole beach went wild, and they're like, yeah, you know, and I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, what do I do now? <laughs> <laughs> I sort of feel helpless at times, you know, like I was one day at the beach in Sydney, Australia in 2004, and I nearly drowned. My friend was holding me, and uh, it was between the third and fourth service on the Sunday, so I was preaching, and I wanted to get out, you know, when you're young, you can do a lot. And I was preaching four times that Sunday, went out to the beach in the afternoon, and uh, the guy that was looking after me, he helped me through the wave, and this huge wave came. I mean, this thing was like, oh my goodness, we're dead. Um, and we we're, were looking at each other, and we're like, okay, hey, hold your breath. So we went under, and boom, this thing forced me right out of his grip. And uh, I, I had a shirt on, and, and I was like in a washing machine, and uh, my, 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 my shirt went over my face and I you spit so much and, 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 and sand and everything's in my nose and my ears and I keep my mouth shut. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't even know which way is up. But I do know that I float. I float. I have a proportion of air in my lungs to body mass and I float very easily. But when you're in that current and that flipping and spinning, it, it takes some time before you float. So I was caught underneath, caught underneath, open my eyes, I can't see a thing. And I'm like, just hold your breath, just hold your breath, just hold your breath, just hold your breath, just hold your breath. I'm still under, everybody's above, and they're like, where's Nick? I don't know. I thought you had him. I know he's gone. I don't know. They're looking, they're screaming. I'm still underwater. And I just get up to the surface. I'm like, okay. I'm like, oh no. My face was covered with my shirt, so I couldn't take a breath. So I then just got up and I realized I'm not going to get in the air. I'm just going to get water. So I hold my breath and then boom, another wave. And I'm going underneath and I'm tossing and turning. I have no idea where I am. I'm like, oh my gosh, are you serious? This is how I'm going to die. Out of all I've come through now, I'm going to die swimming. Are you serious? <laughs> finally, I go up and finally I go up to the next wave and they grab me and they pull the thing off my face and I'm choking. And, uh, man, it's hard. It's hard when life does that to you, isn't it? So to get caught up to the current and no one can find you, so they can't find you yourself. It's supposed to be, you don't know what to expect, and you're just left empty. 
I can put whatever's in your lap. After you write Life Without Wolves on Gold, you can check out the website. It's a cool, typical source there. Life Without Wolves on Gold, you can put down anything that you have in your lap. Like you close your eyes. How many of you are parents? Put your hands down. It's not done yet. If you leave right now, you're missing out on still some stuff. I use every minute of the time given to me. Can you push that down on my ear? Thank you. Thank you. Would you like some um, advice from your parents? You want to know what my parents did for me? Number one, they prayed for me every day. Number two, they never stopped. Praying and planting seeds of truth in me. No matter how I came home after my school day, they said, don't worry, God loves you, He has a plan for you, and you're beautiful just the way that you are. Didn't want to hear it? No. They only believe that because they're my mom and dad. That's what I thought, but I want you to know when your 13 year old wants a do not disturb sign on their door, guess what? Disturb them. Oh, I'm telling you, you 30 year olds are going to hate me, but disturb them. Disturb <laughs> the enemy with the truth. Because it's the enemy's voice in the head. When you teenagers, when you feel like you're alone and your parents don't understand. Yeah, some things you take, some things you don't take. I can't change that for you. But make sure you take all of this. All this. Stop pointing your finger at your parents and look at this. And pray for your parents. Pray for your friends. Is that a good word or what? You know, our job is not to grow. We can't grow our children, right? You plant to see the growing takes is taken care of by God. You think a farmer has a bucket full of seeds and he just gets one and puts it in the ground and does this? <laughs> Don't let the fruit of your labor discourage you from keeping it on goal. Don't let the lack of fruit of your labor that you can see today to stop you from keeping on planting seed. You don't wait for that seed to become a plant to then blossom before you plant another seed. Your job is a farmer, whether you like, whether you like it or not. I'm a farmer. That's all I am. I plant seeds. I plant seeds. I plant seeds. I plant seeds. Everything that comes out of your mouth, you're planting seeds. And when someone plants a seed of evil in me, I will know if it's a lie because I know what the truth is. If I don't know what the lie is, then I'll take it. I'll receive it. I'll chew it. I'll let it grow. And it'll bring evil fruit out of me and, and, and fruit of lies. But if I plant seeds of truth and it gets root and it grows, and they will become an oak of righteousness before the Lord. And I don't know about you. I'm pretty excited getting married in 15 days. I'm very excited. <laughs> the most important decision is to trust God. The second most important decision is to Say yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear many amens under their breath. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty excited about the fact that I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Pretty excited that He provided a wife for me to be with me. Pretty excited about you know being a father and all that. One day and see souls come to Jesus Christ. That that's where it's at for me. I. I can't wait for one of you. I'm serious. I believe one of you will come up to me in heaven and say, Nick, you came to bring forth the planet Earth on January 28, 2012. And I'll never forget it. And 
there is a stepping stone for me to get closer with my Lord. Thank you. Can you imagine everything green? I can. It's greater than for God to give me arms and legs right now. Could you give it to me? Yourself that the joy of the Lord is your strength.